Thank you and welcome to the convocation. I want to welcome all of our students, our faculty, our staff, the international live stream audience that is joining us. This is a great occasion. For the first time in two years, we've been able to gather together. So it's a real privilege to have you here. I do want to recognize several very, very special guests on our platform tonight. They are the leaders of our university and they are people who have encouraged and supported music along with all of the other disciplines in ways that are extraordinary for extraordinary times. First, please join me in greeting our president, President Peter Salovey, the Chris Argis Professor of Psychology. Our provost, Scott Strobel, the Henry Ford II Professor of Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry and Professor of Chemistry, Provost Strobel. <laughs> Dr. Stephanie Spangler, the Vice Provost for Health Affairs and Academic Integrity, the University Title IX Coordinator, the Clinical Professor of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Services, Dr. Spangler. <laughs> and our former provost and a great friend of this school, also the William Brainerd Professor of Economics, Ben Pollock. Ben? Thank you all for being here. And I call now on our colleague, Martin Jean, the director of the Institute of Sacred Music and professor of organ, professor adjunct of divinity, to come and lead us in our invocation. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of earth and cosmos, maker and sustainer of light and truth. The world which you created whole is marred with evil that ravages the planet, divides sibling from sibling, and spreads disease to the helpless and marginalized. As we stand against inequities of power and access, our complicity in their fashioning is exposed. As we extend a healing hand to those in need, we recognize our own part in proliferating illness. Gather us now into one body, one ensemble without borders. Give us singleness of purpose and a passion for justice. Embolden us to be light bearers and truth speakers. And fill us with music so that the world resonates with sounds that unify and harmonize. Loosen our lips to announce a new refrain to follow and unhinder our very bodies so that with bow and beat, chord and key, and voices of every register, culture, and gender, we join a new song that proclaims love and hope for all. Amen.
Peter Salovey has filled every leadership position, position possible in preparation for his role as president. Completing a PhD here, not long after, he chairs his department. He moves then to becoming a dean, a dean of Yale College. He moves to becoming a provost. And the confidence in his leadership ability and his compassion um, is given to him as he assumed the presidency of Yale in 2013. But you can read all about that. I want to tell you the part that you probably don't know. Our president is a formidable bluegrass musician. He is a creator and a maker of music, but he is an appreciator of all musics, not just what he does, but what he hears and what he and his wife, Marta, participate in at the university and in other places across the globe. We are fortunate for that. We are also fortunate to have as our leader a man who has done so much to create and sustain and advance the notion of emotional intelligence. I'm so pleased, Peter, that you could be with us tonight. And Mr. President, I call on you for some very special recognitions. Thank you, Dean Blacker, and good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see you. I'm really uh, pleased to be invited to help out on this special occasion, and uh, thank you for uh, your acknowledgement of bluegrass music uh, that warmed my heart. There's budding bluegrass musicians in this very audience, right? <laughs> Violin players, all you have to do is uh, lose your vibrato and you can play bluegrass. <laughs> Bass players, just put the bow away. Classical guitarists, uh, just buy a big body D28, Martin D28. It's not hard. Three chords and the truth. <laughs> That's what it is. That's not my line. That's a famous country uh, songwriter, country music songwriter, who said, anyone can write country music. It's three chords and the truth. But that is what it is. Well, it's wonderful to be with you here. It's wonderful to be in person. And it's especially exciting to look forward to the new year and to be able to recognize a few individuals here tonight. So first, I'm delighted to have the honor to recognize one of our faculty members who is beginning her 60th year of service to Yale and to the School of Music this fall. I think you all know Professor Shoko Aki Earl. Her passion for making and teaching music have inspired scores of students, and she continues to inspire all of us. Her performances have been heard by audiences around the world, and Alas, she has informed Dean Blocker that she will retire at the conclusion of this academic year after 60 years. In recognition of her service, her studio in Lee Hall will be named the Shoko Aki Earl Violin Studio. And I just ask that you join me in thanking her for her many contributions to the musical life of Yale.
Congratulations and thank you, Shoka. So I have some more good news to share. Uh, as many of you know, endowed professorships are awarded to those individuals whose scholarship has brought distinction to this university. And it's my pleasure to announce two endowed professorships that I will be recommending to the Yale Corporation, that's our Board of Trustees, for their approval at our meeting in October. David Schifrin, professor in the practice of clarinet and one of the most eminent artists in the world for the Sanford Professorship. The Samuel Sanford Professorship of Musical Performance was established in 1967 by Henry Sanford, grandson of Samuel Sanford, to honor his grandfather's life and legacy. Samuel Sanford was the first professor of applied music at Yale and one of the founding professors of the Yale School of Music. A gifted pianist, Sanford was also one of Yale's most generous patrons. This uh, recognition gives me great pleasure because my school instrument uh, was uh, not a bluegrass instrument, but was in fact a clarinet. I will also be recommending Paul Watkins, professor in the practice of cello and the distinguished cellist of the Emerson Quartet to be the inaugural holder of the Pollock Family Professorship. So the Pollock Family Professorship was created to honor Ben Pollock, who is sitting right behind me. He, <laughs> I won't even turn around and see what he's doing back there, but uh, he is the William C. Brainerd Professor of Economics. He's a professor of management, and he was, as you heard, Yale's provost from January 2013 to February 2020. So the donors of the professorship were organized by the late David Swenson, who as you know was our chief investment officer, managed the Yale Endowment. And he very much wanted to recognize Ben and, and Ben's family's strong commitment to music. So it's particularly meaningful that we got to do this with Ben sitting with us tonight. So now, uh, let me uh, first ask Ben, David, and Paul to rise so that we can recognize all three of them, I think, together. Some of you were giggling a little there when I said the phrase professor in the practice. That is a, a rank at Yale professor in the practice. It doesn't mean practicing cello. It meant professor of the practice <laughs> of cello. All right. Let me just conclude by once again, for those of you who are brand new to us here at Yale, welcoming you to Yale University, to the School of Music, to New Haven, Connecticut, and to the next phase of your lives. We will enjoy listening to you in the years ahead. Thank you very much. At convocation, we always hear music. And usually we hear music from one of our new faculty members. We are so pleased this year to welcome Ty Murray as a new faculty member in the School of Music, as an assistant professor who joins us. Ty brings to us a wealth of experience in the concert world, playing with the major orchestras and under major conductors across the globe, having at a very young age been awarded an Avery Fisher Career Grant, and later the Sphinx Medal of Excellence. But you will hear for yourself her passion, her commitment to music, and what she has to say to all of us tonight from her heart. And she will be accompanied by our Deputy Dean, 
uh, the wonderful pianist Melvin Chin, Ty Murray and Melvin Chin. Thank you. 
to try and put into words what Stephanie Spangler and Krista Johnson have meant to the university and the school would be absolutely impossible. You couldn't know this because some of you weren't here when uh, the pandemic started. But the health and safety leadership team, the people who are responsible for the well-being of this university and its community, have given incredible, unselfish, visionary service to enable us to keep going, to remain open, to pursue what it is that we do and to do so safely. They have done this with grace. They have done it with unending energy. And hopefully, at private times, they have just had a smile on their face about how every faculty, staff, member, and student had a solution that went far beyond the science of the moment. But nonetheless, they stayed the course with us. They were our advocates. They are our advocates. And the school recognizes people who give this extraordinary service to music and to what we do with our cultural leadership citation. And it's my great pleasure tonight to present this citation to both Dr. Spangler and to Krista. And it reads to Stephanie Spangler for extraordinary service to music during the global pandemic. And Krista's has the same wording. I'm going to ask you to join in unending applause that will have to end for what they've done for us and what they are still doing as I present them with their certificates and I'll ask them to stand. It is my pleasure to present the Gustav Jacob Steckel Award for Excellence in Teaching. Named for Yale's first professor of music, this award is presented to Yale faculty who, like Steckel, have made extraordinary contributions to the Yale School of Music and in so doing, have enriched the school and enlarged its role in America's musical life. For many years, our recipient tonight has excelled as a performer, as a teacher, as a human being who always quietly looked for ways to make music with students, with colleagues, and for the wider community. Gentle, soft-spoken, but incredibly and unspeakably passionate about music and what it means to our world. And he's been recognized for that across the years. His own membership in Orpheus and St. Luke's orchestras, his students who have gone on to major positions. But I think more than anything else, you students who were with us last year, and saw Professor William Purvis come up and salvage the making of music in person for brass and wind students, saw a miracle. Without his incredible work and undying energy and commitment to this, the parking lot concerts would not have happened. <laughs> the stage at Woolsey Hall or on this stage would not have been transferred to the back door of the Graduate Club. 
I remember sitting by him listening to one of the rehearsals and he was telling me about an encounter that he had had with someone as he walked up to the rehearsal. It was a lady and she was crying. And he said, why don't you come up and, and sit with us? We have an extra chair, it'll be okay. Uh, we all have masks, we're socially distanced. And she said, I can't, I can't, I'm just a person. That's why we do what we do. So with great joy, I present this award to our colleague, our esteemed teacher and wonderful musician and performer, and also a visionary director of the Morris Steinert Collection of Musical Instruments, William Purvis. Just a few words that are not on the official introductions of our special guest tonight. Our provost um, took on this job and had about a week before the pandemic began. Uh, it's been hard for him to catch a break. Um, the beginning of school was looking pretty good, then we had floods. So I think it says something about our provost that he is a person who calls forth our best when the worst happens. But he's also a person who sees beauty. He could see in a fallen tree a bowl, the grain of a bowl, how that bowl is going to look. He can imagine that. He can see in a fallen limb a writing utensil. So he brings to his science an understanding of art and beauty that puts reason and emotion together in a very, very special way. And I'm so pleased to welcome our provost to his first School of Music convocation and he is going to join me at the podium as we install our entering class. Provost Scott Strobel. So will, will members of the entering class please rise. Good evening. I am honored and humbled this evening to join you, this class of extraordinary, extraordinarily talented artists, as you begin your formal training in the Yale School of Music. Tonight, we mark your entry into the university as a graduate student. We celebrate your dedication to learning, to training, to rehearsing, to performing, to sharing, to teaching and to all the activities that will mark, mark your tenure with us here in this school. We welcome you and wish you every success as you embark upon this adventurous journey of artistic, intellectual, and professional growth. Welcome to Yale University. You represent five continents, 20 countries, 23 states, and 64 institutions. You were selected to matriculate at this school by a distinguished faculty who assessed your talent, your musical and academic accomplishments, and your potential for service to the profession and to society. We will challenge you to develop your innate abilities. We will assist you in your journey to discover your musical voice and prepare you to lead in our profession. Welcome to your school.
Now I'm going to ask members of the returning class to stand. Enrolled during a global pandemic, the 2020 Yale School of Music entering class represented five continents, 17 countries, 20 states, and 62 institutions. Like members of the 2021 entering class, you were selected for admission by a distinguished faculty who assessed your talent, your musical and academic accomplishments, and your potential for service to the profession and to society. The unimaginable challenges you faced were exceeded only by your commitment to create and share music through innovative technologies and entrepreneurship. It is my pleasure to formally recognize, celebrate, and thank you for ensuring that music gave voice to our anxieties and dreams during this past year. Your matriculation at the Yale School of Music last fall also marked your entry to the university as a graduate student. Your compassion and resilience are inspiring. And tonight, we welcome you and wish you continued success on your adventurous journey of artistic intellectual, and professional growth. Idealistically, you students chose to enroll at the Yale School of Music so that you could receive and imbue into the very essence of your being the good of this place. To discover and develop your unique musical signature and voice, to unlock your mind and heart, to explore artistic and academic spheres previously unknown to you, and to prepare to embark on an unending musical journey filled with wonder, joy, and satisfaction throughout your life. It is more likely, however, that the practical reasons had greater influence on your decision. For example, you had earned the opportunity and invitation to study with a world-renowned member of our artist faculty. Yale's international reputation and extensive network along with your Yale degree, just might enhance your career aspirations. Also, you could satisfy some of your own curiosities about how and why a Yale education produces leaders with incredibly diverse philosophies, like Presidents Bill Clinton and George Bush, or Supreme Court Justices Sonia Sotomayor and Brett Kavanaugh or artists with such distinct voices as Cole Porter and Caroline Shaw. And not insignificantly, you could afford the tuition. <laughs> Undoubtedly, one or more of these assumptions influenced your decision to become part of our community. Now, the task at hand is to prepare for the next part of your musical journey. Three questions that have no fixed answers might serve as guideposts for your time at Yale and as you travel beyond these ivy-clad walls. First, who are we as artists? More to the point, who do you say you are? Who do you say you are? E.E. E. Cummings expressed a prescient idea about this question and said that, quote, it takes courage to grow up and be who you really are, end quote. I urge you tonight to summon your courage and your conviction and do not let the world tell you who you are, for your individuality will be lost. Do not let a critic tell you who you are, for your opinion of your best is equally important. Do not let money tell you who you are, 
lest you lose your soul and with it your God-given talent. Do not let this school, this university, or any other institution tell you who you are. For your distinct musical voice will be inaudible, silenced. And do not be defined by another's values. Listen to your inner voice, the one that calls forth that open heart and outstretched hand, and the willingness to be both vulnerable and empathetic. Who do you say you are as a person and as an artist? The second question is why we do what we do. A simple glib response might be because we cannot not do it, but that is too easy. The renowned pedagogue Nadia Boulanger offered this thought about why and how we respond to the musical impulse with us, within us. Quote, one must try to do one's work with enough love and care to make it represent one's very best, end quote. That love and that passion is what compels us to endure solitude and to learn from the stillness within us. And the third inquiry is this, why does what we do have value for society? Indeed, why does music have value for society, for humankind? Perhaps Voltaire had a plausible insight to this simple yet vexing question. Music, he said, next to food, clothing, and shelter is the greatest human need, end quote. Music's concern extends far beyond skill, for it embraces the intellectual, emotional, and spiritual, not religious, but spiritual maturation of humanity. What, you might ask, could my music and my life bring to a world seemingly intent on annihilating itself? Your thoughts and questions related to music societal influences will cite varied and numerous accounts of music's power to bear both the heaviest burdens of our emotional psyches and the soaring imaginations of our minds and hearts. Hope, I believe, is the common denominator that emerges time and time again in these inquiries. You can and you must construct new bridges of hope to all people on our planet that so desperately need compassion, understanding, and encouragement. I speak not of optimism disguised as a weak hope, but rather the hope described by the prophetic Reverend Peter Gomes as, quote, muscular, a hope born of character that gets us through and beyond when the worst that can happen happens, end quote. Shakespeare penned the question perfectly for the world you inherit today. He said, how with this rage shall beauty hold a plea? How with this rage shall beauty hold a plea? Put in our rhetoric, how can artists like you, like us, respond to conditions that exceed our most horrific nightmares? We bring hope in consoling strains and bursts of anger, in steady pulse and unending syncopations. So how will you influence the world that is yours to share with billions of other fellow human beings? Your musical commentaries can bring disparate peoples, creeds, and values to a more meaningful civil discourse. While political and economic problems have political and economic solutions, culture and its rightful place in such decision making is often tragically absent. History chronicles the absolute importance of the artistic voice in matters of public morality, for we teach and model values through our artistic and personal choices. Those artistic and personal choices will determine who you are 
and who you will become. Who do you say you are? Thank you. Traditionally, we sing together. And tonight, we are not able to sing. We are not able to hum. We are able to listen to our new endowed professor, Professor Paul Watkins, play for us on the music. I invite you, as he plays, to look on the back of your program to follow the words and to think about what you have heard tonight, to think about what you heard before you got here, to give gratitude for the many, many people who made it possible for you to be here and for those whom you will touch in your career and life ahead.
What a wonderful evening to be back together. It gives us great, great joy and much anticipation of what we can look forward to in the year ahead. Now I want to thank in advance the Yale Percussion Group who are going to provide our recessional. And I need to give a little bit of instruction and I ask your um, attentiveness and compliance uh, because we're all standing in front of the health and safety officers. <laughs> and the whole object in this is to get people out of the hall in a reasonable way. So the Yale Percussion Group is going to play for us and then you will notice that members of the group are going to go to the rear of the hall. As they are playing, those of you on this side of the hall will exit going out on that wall and through the doors. About halfway split, you will go this way and the same on this aisle. The faculty and staff will wait until you have exited. As you get downstairs, uh, please do not linger. Normally we would have a wonderful reception and I will say in front of the president and, pro and the provost, we are going to have some kind of party when it's possible. I am promising you that. <laughs> but tonight, you're going to get not another box lunch, but uh, a bag that contains um, a nice drink and a treat, <laughs> and it's up to you to decide what you wish to do with it as long as you are out of the building. <laughs> so one of our wonderful ensembles is the Yale Percussion Group, um, taught by Professor Robert Van Sice, and I call on the percussion group now to play for us and then to lead us out. <laughs> 